It's a full documentary of the history of Africa compiled by Isaac Pojoya. Let's see how the story unfolds. New Africa is rising. It can claim the youngest median population in the world, sitting at around 20 years old, versus the other continents, which sit at over 30. It is the second largest continent in the world as well, and was home to the richest man to have ever lived. The tallest, fastest, and overall biggest land animals are from this beautiful continent. Often overlooked in history, Africa, the home of over 3,000 ethnic groups, and over 2,000 languages, deserves more than 10 minutes, so we urge you to use this video as a stepping stone to more advanced topics. Fossils Strewn about the African landscape, tell researchers all they need to know. We can use these to trace back our human lineage to over 7 million years ago. Our own species, Homo sapiens, would begin to emerge just 350,000 years ago, and would undertake a migration, known as the Out of Africa Migration, around 50,000 years ago, sending humans all across the globe. The Sahara, once lush and green, would experience a drying period, beginning in 5000 BCE, and increasing due to a shift in the Earth's axis, around 3500 BCE, eventually becoming a desert. This caused early humans to leave the Sahara and move to the Nile Valley. Before agriculture, the hunter-gatherers would begin to domesticate cattle, the donkey, and goats. The region would eventually become Egypt, and is one of the few areas of the world to have independently developed a writing system. With their first pharaoh taking power around 3100 BCE, Egypt would become one of the longest-lasting civilizations. They would fall to the Achaemenid Empire under the Persians, but soon, in 322 BCE, Alexander the Great, greeted as a liberator, would conquer not only Egypt, but the entire Persian Empire. Egypt would continue, under the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty, following Alexander's death. During this time, another North African power would come to prominence. They were the Carthaginians, based in Carthage, founded by settlers from Phoenicia, who would come to be known as Punics. These Mediterranean sea traders would rival Rome, and that would be the cause of their ultimate demise, with Rome utterly destroying the North African civilization. Later, with the Roman Empire, that region would be named the province of Africa Proconsularis. Septimius Severus, who was half Punic himself, became the first Roman emperor of African descent. The first century CE were marked by the spread of Christianity in Africa in the regions closest to Judea, like Egypt, Nubia, and the Aksumite Empire. In the 600s though, Islam would sweep through North Africa. The Berbers living west of Egypt would convert to the new faith, and it would begin to spread southwards through trade routes. In West Africa, we believe the Mande-speaking peoples to have discovered agriculture independently, and created numerous urban centers, like Dartishit and Wolata. A bit to the east, Genoe Jaina was settled around 300 BCE, and grew to be one of the most important urban centers in sub-Saharan Africa. Around present-day Nigeria, in 1500 BCE, the Nok culture would thrive, creating impressive terracotta figures, of humans, and other animals. Africa, didn't have a period of Middle Ages like Europe, but the period from the 800s to 1700s, was one of relative stability. To the south were the Bushmen, or San peoples, living decentralized hunter-gatherer lifestyles. In Central Africa, the Bantu speakers would expand all throughout Southern and Eastern Africa. Some of these Bantu speakers, the Swahilis, would establish trading towns on the eastern coast. West Africa, the Sahel in particular, is where Africa's most prominent kingdoms and empires would take hold, amassing their wealth through trading routes on the Sahara. Apart from the older Ghana Empire and Canaan Bornu Empire, the Mali Empire would become the most famous through the wealth accumulated by Mansa Musa. 
After the empire became fragmented, Sunni Ali would take control of the territory, and trading routes in the 1400s, founding the Songhai Empire, the largest in Africa. Islam would then become its official religion soon after. In North Africa, tribal confederacies from Arabia migrated westwards into the lands of the Berbers. This caused a mix of culture, with the Berbers becoming Arabized. While slavery had already been present in Africa, with the Trans-Sahara slave trade, Swahili coast trade, and Barbary coast, it struck another gear between the 15th to 19th centuries, with the Atlantic slave trade. In total, Europeans would take up to 12 million Africans to the Americas, as slave labor. In the 1800s, the decline in the slave trade, along with the presence of Royal Navy patrols on the coast, caused West Africa to adapt to more legitimate markets. The Ashanti Empire and Kingdom of Dahomey, who played a large part in the slave trade, would now focus on timber, gold, palm oil, and cocoa. Anti-slavery treaties were also signed with numerous other leaders in Africa. During the new imperialism period, in the late 1800s, after the Berlin Conference of 1884, Africa was divided up between European nations, and the scramble for Africa would take place. In the mid to late 1800s, Europeans only controlled 10% of African territory, but by 1914, they would have a staggering 90% under their control. Only Liberia, and arguably Ethiopia, were spared colonization. After World War II, a wave of decolonization occurred, and native Africans took back their land in mass independence movements. Ghana was the first sub-Saharan country to achieve this, in 1957. Portugal's presence in Africa would date back to the 1500s, and finally come to an end, over 400 years later. In South Africa, however, independence wasn't granted to the native majority, but to the Dutch minority, who still ruled under an apartheid system, until 1994. In part due to the arbitrary boundaries Europeans divided Africa into, the continent's modern history has been hampered by instability. As the European military was a constant and stabilizing force, albeit oppressive, this same form of government was seen as the most effective. Military dictatorships would dominate Africa during the latter half of the 20th century. This period would see an unlucky 13 presidential assassinations. In 1994, perhaps remnants of the European favoritism of the Tutsis, the Rwandan genocide would occur, resulting in an estimated 1.1 million deaths. Another tragic event, the Second Congo War, beginning in 1998 was estimated to have directly killed 350,000, and a staggering 5.4 million indirectly. The 21st century though, would see Africa emerge with a new destiny. Ravaged by centuries of colonialism, exploitation, and political corruption, new economic investment in Africa is giving the continent new hope. Investments are notably by China, even if this can be seen as neo-colonialism, but it's still seen as preferable to the violent, hard imperialism, of the past. What currently threatens Africa the most however, is climate change, and it will take a global effort to change course, one we have no choice but to take. The story of Africa is one of great sadness, but also great triumph. It is one of the most beautiful continents on Earth, home to numerous species, including our own. We are still making discoveries in our homeland to piece together our untold past. But for this land, the origin of millions of years of our ancestral history. It's truly the future that shines brightest.